Hey guys, how's it going? Um, <clears throat> a brother not that long ago told me that I should start hitting really hard on this, these false futurism doctrines like the rapture and the millennial kingdom, etc. And um, because there's so many people deceived by this, and you know I've came out with some videos refuting those things, saying that they're not true, trying to explain verses that people use, and uh, I do want to continue doing that, and I agree that it does really need to be hit on hard. The only thing is that there are some things that I still have yet to understand, so I'm trying to work things out. But what I do know, I'll share and make videos, and, um, you know, over time, as I learn more and more, and when I feel more confident that I got things down, I definitely will. Okay, I will hit on this stuff hard, and I know a lot of people won't like it, because a lot of people are really ingrained in that kind of thought. And I was, you know, when I first got saved, it's it's pretty popular, and... Uh, they can make things seem to be true with what they're saying. But I think that the more that you study, the more thought that you give this, if you're open and you pray about it, then um, you're going to see that those things aren't true. And I want to do my best to explain things in the best detail that I can to make it as easy as I can for people to understand you know, what the Bible really teaches on these subjects and uh, so it's just it's going to be a bit of a process, but I, I'll go ahead and mention some things now. Maybe I've talked about before. Go into a little bit more detail, and actually I'm going to go back a page here. So I'm adding more on this expository on the Book of Revelation, and I started making videos going over these things, and then I've kind of paused, and now I'm kind of skipping around. But I'm still working on this. I should probably put more time into this to try to get it done to at least say something about every verse or passage in the book of Revelation, try to get this to, to a point to where um, it's done. So it's not insanely hard. I mean, there's only 22 chapters in the book of Revelation. If you just go verse by verse like this, if you just lay it all out, you know, before too long, if, if you can stay focused on this, then you can go through it. But there's a lot of misunderstanding about the book of Revelation. You know, the rapture and stuff, it's not just about the book of Revelation. It's also other verses that people use, other things. But um, a, a huge misunderstanding of uh, how Revelation is supposed to be understood in its own context is, is a problem with all of this stuff. Um, but I want to talk about the two witnesses first. Okay, There's a lot of videos about who are the two witnesses. Is it, is it Enoch and Elijah? Is it Moses and Elijah? Or Moses and Enoch? Or whoever and whoever. And I used to believe that too. And I actually made a video that I said I thought it was like Moses and Elijah. And um, I remember my aunt asking me months ago what I thought about it. Because I showed her that teaching. And I said I thought that it was Moses and Elijah. Because I thought that's what scripture pointed towards. Uh, and now, you know, I, I believe totally differently. Um, you know, it's none of them, okay? Basically, the two witnesses represent the church, okay? And I wrote that here. Revelation 11.3 says, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. The two witnesses are symbolic of the church universal throughout its entire dispensation, okay? That means the, the saints before us, us now, and the saints that are to come the Christians in the future, it represents all of us, okay, throughout time. The two witnesses are symbolic of the church universal. Um, and, and, I mean, if you think about it, I'm not, I didn't spend time in refuting that this idea that it's, you know, Moses and Elijah and all that, but, you know, it, it's just based on the whole nature of the book of Revelation. It's all symbolic. It's all allegory. It's all spiritual, okay? And I know people don't want to believe that, but that's what it is. That's what you have to believe. You, you have to come to this understanding to understand it. Uh, but the church is represented by two witnesses, specifically two, to support the truthfulness of its message, okay? Of their message is what I should have put. The truthfulness of their message, because the testimony of two is true. In John chapter 8, verse 17, we see it is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Okay? And he's speaking of passages like Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 6, chapter 19, verse 15. And we see Jesus mentioning 
um, and Matthew eighteen sixteen talking about, you know, if, if a brother disobeys or something he doesn't want to hear, take it to the church or take it to two or three men, okay? So, right here, the testimony of two men is true. So the message that these two witnesses are are prophesying is true, okay? And that would be the message of repentance, and we'll see that, okay? Also, the two witnesses represent the church going out and preaching to all the world as Jesus sent his disciples in pairs of two to preach, okay? He sent them in twos. In Luke chapter 10, verse 1, after these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Two and two. The 2,200 and three score days represents the entire church age. We'll talk about that some other time, but they're clothed in sackcloth because they are preaching repentance. Okay? It's symbolic. It all represents stuff, okay? Um, you know, there's a reason why he sees them clothed in sackcloth. We need to understand that Revelation is a vision that Jesus is giving to John, okay? We need to understand how to interpret this vision. Okay, so the futurists, they, they take a total misunderstanding of it. They think it's all this future-specific moments. It's this seven-year tribulation. And, and they've got it all construed. Okay. And I believe that it's easy to fall into that. But you're going to see that there's much more consistency and truthfulness to understanding it allegorical. Because... The futurist interpretation is is really false, and there's there's problems with that. Okay, um, it's false. So, so this whole debate about you know who are these two witnesses? Are they Moses and Elijah and all this? That's all just garbage. That's just all trash. All that time that's spent on that stuff. Okay, it's neither one. It's it's a totally wrong idea about this passage. Revelation 11.4, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before God of the earth. Okay, uh, The two olive trees goes back to Zerubbabel, who was a prince, and Joshua, who was a priest, in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 2 through 14. This symbolizes, again, the royal and priestly prerogatives of the church. Okay, We are kings and priests in Christ. Okay, It's like Zerubbabel and Joshua. And the two candlesticks, I didn't say anything about that, but um, possibly that they're, um, they can't be extinguished. Um, they are light. They're light to the world. Okay, uh, just, just thinking about stuff like that off the top of my mind, you can see how that uh, is true. Okay, they're obviously not two olive trees. Okay. He's talking about two people, but these two people represent a group, okay, the church universal. They're obviously not two candlesticks, literally and physically. And everybody knows that there's lots of symboliz symbol symbolism in Revelation, but um, they want to reject that the whole thing's like uh, symbolism. The whole thing is allegorical, but it is, okay. That's just the way that it is. And Revelation's an awesome book. I love it. Um, everybody needs to study it. But it's so easy to get trapped up in all this false doctrine that's out there. Revelation chapter 11, verse 5, And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Fire proceedeth out of their mouth. This represents the power of their words. Okay, in Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 14, Wherefore thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Because ye speak this word, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire, and his people wood, and it shall devour them. Is God really making words fire? Is God really making people physically, literally wood? No, this is all figurative. Okay, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. This is because if any man sets out to destroy the church, it will be to his own ruin. Okay, spiritually, eternally. Okay, people, you know, wicked, lost sinners may seem to have victory in this world, but they don't. Okay. And Christians may seem to, you know, lose in this world, but we have victory. Okay, eternally. 
And so, I mean, this is awesome. This is, if you really understand this for what it is, then praise God. Okay. Um, and, you know, fire coming out of people's mouths and stuff makes for a cool visual. It makes for, you know, cool movies that you can sit back and eat popcorn to and stuff. But when it comes to understanding God's word, that is true and very important, okay, we need to understand it as it's meant to be understood. And it takes some studying, but we can see figures of speech all over the Bible. We can see symbolism, okay? We know that Revelation is full of symbolism. That's what it is. Okay. So, you know, the futurists, they think that, you know, these two people, or, or Moses and Elijah, or whoever, brought back to life for whatever reason to... to to be a witness to the Jews or something, and like they're physic, they're breathing like physical, literal fire, like, like miracles, like Moses did and stuff. Okay. If you see like the Left Behind movies, you'll actually see that. That's what they're teaching. That's what they're showing people. Okay, but it's totally construing the the truth of this. Revelation 11.6, these have power to shut heaven, and it rained not in the days of their prophecy, and have powers over water to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. These are miracles like Moses and Elijah. The church has just as great of resources as they did. Okay, in Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Okay, so he's referencing these things that Moses and Elijah did, but he's not saying that this is what, you know, the two witnesses actually do, but that they have power like Moses and Elijah, okay, over the enemy. Okay, um, so it's all a vision, it's all symbolic, and so that's that. You know, basically just know that the two witnesses represent the church, okay? And there's two of them mentioned specifically because of it represents the truthfulness of the message that they're preaching, which is repentance. That's why they're wearing sackcloth. Um, and, that, and then the fire that proceeds out of their mouth is, is the message, um, you know, of judgment and condemnation to those who don't repent, who don't turn to Christ. and um, so that's that, you know, again, all this Moses, Elijah nonsense, all that, blah, 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 that's just, that all goes in the trash bin, okay? Thousands of sermons have been taught on that stuff. It's all false, okay? Now, let's go to another big thing that the futurists talk about, and that will be the Mark of the Beast. I actually had a video where I mentioned the Mark of the Beast. I don't know exactly what I said or whatever, but I said it's symbolic, and, um, Somebody left in the comments, they said, well, the mark of the beast can't be symbolic because it stops people from being able to buy and sell. <laughs> and it's like, okay, you're not looking at the bigger picture, okay? It's all symbolic. Um, so they're still trying to hold on to this, this hard, wooden, literal, futurist interpretation where it's not even that they're trying to take things physically and literally, but they're also just like twisting things. They're just seeing things that aren't even there, okay? Because it's been it's been taught so much that people just get deceived. But let's talk more about this. Revelation thirteen sixteen, um, and he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Okay, this is not a physical or literal mark, just like the seal of God that we see in Revelation chapter 7, verse 3, and the name on the foreheads of the saints in Revelation chapter 14, verse 1. Okay, the mark symbolizes ownership, okay, who is master, and those who sell themselves to the beast system. They have surrendered to the beast to be his servants, okay? And so we see that uh, in Revelation 14, 9, and 11, and, and Revelation 24, that those who didn't take the mark, uh, or those who did, 
those who did take the mark are the ones who worship the beast. You know, those who didn't take the marks are the ones who don't worship the beast. So it has to do with servant and master, slave and master, okay? So those who t have taken this mark are those who have surrendered to this beast system, okay? And the mark is not literal or physical. I mean, how many times do we see videos talking about microchips and numbers and this and that? This is coming or this is here. That's all nonsense, okay? And somebody might say, well, are you saying that there's not a microchip that's coming out that people are going to have to take or something? You know, there might be, you know, there is stuff like that, sure, okay? But that's not what this is talking about, okay? This is symbolic, and it's spiritual and allegorical, and it's, um, you know, people have been taking that mark, and people are taking that mark already. Okay. Um, it's not a physical or literal mark. It's just those who submit themselves to the beast system that has been here. <sighs> Revelation 13, verse 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. That no man might buy or sell. Christians in any age experience persecution and ostracism. Okay? If we don't go along with the world or whatever, we don't get the quote-unquote benefits that they can have. <laughs> okay? That's the way that it's always been, and it will be. Christians will be persecuted. There, there are... Um, you know, things that we won't be allowed to do because, or to, to enjoy, you know. <sighs> because we've chosen to follow Christ. So, that's just a, a general truth. Still, it's all symbolic. And the church of Smyrna was poor, and this could be why. Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 18, here is wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score and six, which basically just means imperfection or false religion. Okay, not a whole lot of thought has to be put into that number but um i don't know if i mentioned this maybe i did but i don't remember <laughs> mentioning it but the 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 mark is in the forehead because that represents the mind and, and the thoughts okay and the hand represents actions and deeds okay and those who surrender to this beast system um they surrender, you know, their mind and their thoughts and, and their deeds. What they do um, is because of, you know, who they serve. So, but that's it. I mean, I think it's a lot easier to understand this way, actually. I think it, it makes way more sense than what people are trying to teach. But, you know, people are going to keep on teaching that. Uh, see, like Levi Wayne Price coming out with stuff on the Mark of the Beast all the time. It just uh, gets, you know, a little bit annoying after a while. <laughs> but, you know, lots of people do this. So, let's not be, you know, fearful of this false teachings that people are teaching. And let's just continue to serve the Lord and spread his message and study his word. And there's a lot more that can be said about all this, so I need to try to work on Revelation more and try to get something said about each verse a little bit. But that's that, okay? Two witnesses of the church and the mark of the beast. It's just a physical, or it's not a physical literal mark. It's just figurative. It's just saying that... You know, those who have surrendered to the beast system have accepted its mark figuratively. Okay. 
so and you know when you understand that and you understand that the forehead symbolizes the mind and the thoughts and um the hand represents the actions and deeds that that to me you know it's it's the true meaning and it's a, a fuller meaning and these futurists they just want to say well it just it's just a chip or something that actually goes in the hand or it's just a, it's a literal physical mark that goes in the hand that there's like no meaning to that okay but when we understand this there there we see like okay aha that this makes sense this is uh you no know, we get the full meaning we get the true meaning and it's going to be much more gratifying when we understand the bible correctly as it's supposed to meant um you know our soul our spirit should rejoice in learning these truths so i hope that somebody learned something i hope this is enough to convince somebody who has previously believed wrongly about this stuff uh, if not there will be more and i just hope that over time i hope that people will see this and, and change because i believed futurism before and i've actually dedicated a section now to doctrines of devils i had the rapture of the millennial kingdom i decided just to put it under a category of futurism and i'm going to go into more detail about you know the false teachings on the antichrist the false teachings on the seven year tribulation and the mark of the beast and and whatever else there's a lot involved but it's basically it's a lot of going over the book of revelation so a lot here um in the expository i'm just going to kind of say like what these verses are teaching for the most part but in the doctrines of devils i'm going to go like what the false teachings are and then kind of rebutting those and then saying like what the true teaching is or whatever so anyways that's that and still working on all this so god bless guys